A little while ago I bought some stickers for the Wood Knight. These are the Kiss Cut vinyl stickers. They've got a little bit of spacing around the edges. And I think for this style logo it looks really good. So much so that I replicated it in a sign and it lights up. I started off in Illustrator creating the outline of my logo. All the parts of my logo are disconnected from each other, which would cause issues with cutting it out. This process can be done in Inkscape, but I use Illustrator. After using the Pathfinder tool to merge the layers, I could take the merged object into a new document. The sign will be made up of an acrylic face and two MDF layers that are slightly larger. To get the proper sizing, I can't just expand the layers as it won't line up correctly in the details. I need to offset the paths. Illustrator has a tool for this built in, creatively named Offset Path. Using a 10mm offset with rounded joins gives me the look I'm after. I can repeat the offset from the original line, but this time going 5mm instead. This 5mm offset will form the recess of the top MDF layer as well as the outline for the acrylic. These lines are saved as Illustrator files and open directly in VCAV. The acrylic layer is a really simple 2D profile cut using tabs. I'm using a spiral single flute 1 8 inch bit. Everything seemed to go right, cast acrylic does cut pretty easily, but it wasn't too long before the first issue popped up. That's the first time I've created sparks from a router. It turns out when I'd been testing various things throughout the week, I hadn't properly tightened up the collet, and the bit vibrated out, snagged, and then sparked in the collet. Amazingly, the bit wasn't damaged, though it's cheap enough that I don't have to risk it. For attempt number two, the proper safety precautions were taken, such as sticking my logo on the spindle for good luck. Even though I'm getting good chips from the acrylic, it has staticky properties that make dust extraction not seem to work all that amazing. Compressed air, or in this case my shop blower, help with chip clearance. I ummed and erred on how to make the logo appear on top of the sign. Engraving then painting the acrylic was an option, but sort of a last resort. MDF could be cut out and stuck on, but positioning would be difficult. Then I remembered my wife had a silhouette cameo, aka a paper CNC that can cut out vinyl. Using the original logo vectors, I could export that to DXF, because that's the only format the horrible software will import for free. The software for this vinyl cutter is Silhouette Studio, which I don't recommend, but as far as I know there isn't an alternative. Once you import the vector, make sure it's scaled correctly, and if not, adjust. On my first attempt, it auto-scaled my vector to 95% of what I wanted. Great. At least now I have a giant TWK sticker, I guess. While the machine is terrifying sounding, it does work reasonably well. A drag knife cuts out the logo in about six minutes. The rest of the unwanted vinyl could be peeled away. I found out later that this process is called weeding. Some of the finer details had to be picked off with a knife. I forgot to shoot it, but I did apply a transfer film. The vinyl is self-adhesive and comes on a paper backer. That's the white layer. The transfer film sits on the non-adhesive side of the vinyl and lets you position the whole sticker after removing the paper. The vinyl bond is stronger than the transfer film, so it can just be peeled away. Back in VCAV, I could work on the two MDF layers. The first is just a simple cutout of the logo. The second is very similar, just with the added rebate. I ended up using a profile toolpath on the rebate as well, just changing it to machine on the inside of the line. Pocketing with the bit I had selected didn't want to go over the innermost line, so it would have needed to switch to a smaller bit. Really wasn't necessary for this. Because I only needed a quarter sheet of MDF for this, I grabbed something from the big box store. It turns out this is lower grade MDF than I'm used to, and summer in Melbourne usually has big humidity swings, which made this the fluffiest MDF I've ever encountered. While downcut would have been cleaner, I was genuinely worried about being able to clear the tool paths. The dust extraction wasn't pulling enough out, and I actually had to clear it with a screw while the CNC was still going. The cordless jigsaw makes really quick work of the tabs.
The two layers could be glued together. Alignment wasn't perfect due to the deflection in the thin MDF, causing it to shift while clamping. If I ever do this type of thing again, I'll just glue up two layers of MDF, then send it through the CNC. The flush trim bit on the router table made really quick work of cleaning off the tabs completely. I've also got to point out just how great the dust collection on my router table fence is. At this stage, I haven't made the dust collection box underneath. Not needing glue to hold the acrylic in place is also pretty satisfying. I'm using 5630 sized LED strips and they're overkill for what I need, but they work and they're pretty inexpensive. My original plan was to mount this straight to the wall, but I noticed in testing that the lights had a dull spot in the middle. Well, less of a dull spot, more reflecting the color of whatever surface they were on. Sticking an off-cut of acrylic behind it really demonstrated how bright they can be with the right backer. So I was back to the CNC to cut out a backer plate from some 6mm MDF I had laying around. This was sized just a few millimeters smaller than the outside of the sign, so it wasn't visible. With the back plate taped in position on the back of the sign frame, I could drill through holes for dowels to hold everything on. These dowels are glued into the back plate only and did just a nice fit on the sign itself. While testing the reflections, I discovered I liked having the sign offset from the wall, so I used slightly longer dowels than needed. The back plate is attached to the wall using spaghetti wall plugs. So I know this was a bit more of a crafty project, I suppose, than a woodworking project, but it was interesting using skills through woodworking and CNC stuff that applies to the vinyl cutting process as well and sort of all putting it together. Hopefully you guys also found that somewhat interesting. I'm really happy with how it's turned out despite numerous pebcac issues. This is the first time I've done anything with vinyl so the small bubbles and the slight misalignment really don't bother me that much. The location's great, it means it can be in videos like this just as a background item. It's not obnoxiously large or anything like that. You can turn it on and off with this remote. Uh, I've just used a a remote PowerPoint thing that I got from Big Box Store. Uh, this is an Arlec brand one. That also controls my shop vac and my dust collector. And the kit I got this in came with uh, three PowerPoints even though it can be programmed for four. Hopefully you got something out of this video and thanks for watching.